There is only one reality and just different perspectives and your perspective can either be aligned with reality or not aligned with reality. What's up guys, Aldo back here from PragerU and today we're gonna be talking about some Catholicism stuff. I know you guys like that. I've been wanting to bring some more of that content. And today joined with us is Franco Fernandez. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you for having me. I uh, This is exciting. This is exciting. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I actually found your content uh, kind of randomly. I was just scrolling through my feed one day. Uh, I found your page. If you guys don't know, Franco makes content uh, really based around Catholicism. I really liked your stuff. For those that don't know who you are, uh, tell us a little bit about you and the stuff that you make. Yeah, so uh, my name is Franco Aurelio Fernandez. That's my last name. I usually go by Franco Aurelio, just uh, first and middle name. But yeah, I make Catholic content. I started out making music um, and then I came to Catholicism. I started doing a lot of, I just really wanted to talk a lot about politics, cultural issues, especially the more deeper I got into Catholicism. I just really, really wanted to talk about like a lot of the sexual issues in Catholicism because I think that's like a huge thing that uh, America right now is like suffering from the sexual issues. So uh, yeah, definitely wanted to like just put in my two cents out there. I like, uh, I just love to like, just share as much things as I can that are, that I personally fi found to be very useful in my life. And I want to share, share that to others. So yeah, that's pretty much just me, uh, Catholic content creator, essentially. Yeah. Talk to me about like your, your Catholic, uh, you know, journey. Yeah, so uh, I wasn't always Catholic. I, w I actually used to be Protestant. In the past, I also considered Islam. I considered Judaism. I went through a phase of a new age spirituality, actually, as well. I didn't know it was that, but it was like, you know, with the chakras and all that stuff, right? Um, the third eye, you know, vision indigo, all that stuff. But um, the... So I, I was raised Catholic, like, and by raised, I mean, like, very culturally Catholic. So, like, my parents were cultural Catholics. Just so you have, like, some context, I didn't know what a sin, I probably didn't even know what a sin was, like, up until high school. Um, I had no idea, like, I just did not know much about the faith. Um, I got, went to Mass a few times with my parents, but that was about it. I just, like, I, I found it dreadful. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I pretty much lived like an atheist, but I think I was more on the Gnostic side throughout my most of my life. Then, late 2021, I got into to Christianity because I was already getting red pilled a lot on politics. Um, and then from there, you know, we, we all have that libertarian phase. I went through a little bit of that as well. So, you know, I, I'm not exempt. I'm not exempt from the libertarian phase. Yeah, so I came into Christianity, um, but I was very anti-Catholic. Reason being was because I saw my parents. I saw like a bunch of other Catholics that I knew because in, in Hispanic culture, a lot of Hispanics are culturally Catholic. And so I was like, you guys don't read your Bibles. You guys are not following the faith. Yeah, like this is these, these are Catholics. Like, oh my gosh, right? And I was into a lot of like other like conspiracy theories about the Vatican and all this stuff. Like, I literally used to think the Pope was a pedophile straight up. Like, uh, wow. Well, that gets another point, of course. But um, I was really anti-Catholic, super anti-Catholic. But God placed a lot of good, good people in my life that really. Uh, rebuked me on my air and I like I was able to see like oh my gosh like this is like this is the completeness of Christianity like I have I had so many misconceptions and I think Fulton Sheen says this very well he says how like something along the lines of like how mo like most of the world hates like what they think Catholicism is instead of what it actually is and I totally like that was then that used to be me literally like I used to be like oh my gosh the sign of the cross isn't that like if you like do it in a certain way couldn't that be the upside down cross you know like in Hollywood they do like the upside down cross it's like all like the every time people come to me and they're like you know catholics believe this that whatever it's never true or it's a very it's, a, yeah. it's always a misunderstanding of what catholicism is and i feel like yeah. the people that have the the worst uh the worst view of catholicism just don't have the full you know the full uh, yeah the full view of it or they have a misconception yeah. or fair enough you know i i know people that just had a bad experience in the church and so because of a bad experience at one catholic church you know, they threw the whole, the faith away altogether and they went to another, which is fair. Yeah. I understand if you have a bit bad traumatic experience with anything, you know, you're going to have a, you know, just a bad, um, a bad view of it. But I do find it very sad. And that's where it's important to like realize, because this is what I did and this is what a lot of people do as well, especially people that are harmed by the church or have some bad experiences that we have to understand to be objective in the sense of um, judging a religion by what it actually teaches instead of what its disobedient followers emulate. Right. Because no one's going to practice a religion perfectly. Some might practice it horribly, like totally contrary to it. That's why it's so important to actually judge it objectively ra rather than subjectively, which is like, you know, what you see a lot nowadays, especially with what the left is pushing. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. 
it's funny, you know, you talked about how you used to be like a cultural Catholic and then you went through, you know, you're libertarian, you were a little atheist or agnostic. I don't know. I never had that experience. I was talking to you before how I just, my parents were like, this is what it is. Yeah. You're going to go to church. You're going to believe this and that's it. And I don't think, you know, I think everyone has a questioning. I definitely questioned it. I never went away from it. But uh, one thing that my dad told me, I was uh, I, when I was going through my questioning phase and really digging deeper into it so that I could validate it for myself is I said, you know, dad, did you ever question it? And he said he didn't even question it. He was like, when we were growing up, you know, we lived on, we lived out in the country and our parents said, you're Catholic. This is what you're going to do. And you believe it. And they stuck with it for their whole lives. And I had a similar experience, but to me, that was kind of funny that there was no questioning even, but it made me reflect on the fact that we have so many inputs nowadays you know we have the influence from our schools we have influence from our friends we have influence from social media youtube tiktok yeah. instagram whereas before the only things influencing you really it was your family and it was the church and that was about it yeah and so i feel like nowadays the people that are going away from faith whether it's christianity or any faith for that matter it's because we have a lot more cultural influences we have a lot more outside influences that are competing for our time, competing for our spirituality, competing for yeah. our hearts, our souls, our minds. Like it's, it's a really big competition. And I feel like we do people that do have the faith. We do have to be the stewards of it because we are competing. You know, it's, we are, it's a big fight right now. We're fighting an uphill battle. Yeah. yeah we're in the information age. Most definitely. Like we have, and we have a huge, we're a huge why generation. Like, why is this? Why is that? That's why like these, I, I always, I always find it insufficient when um, other, these other like, um, these other like out sources of, you know, like the red pills communities or like other things that try to give you the truth, but only like either like a kind of distorted version of it or just an incomplete version of it. Cause either way, it's not going to satisfy if you do not have the fullness of Christ. Cause if once you have the fullness of Christ, then you're going to be able to be safe, safeguarded from any other thing that can try to corrupt you. It's like bacteria. Like it's, you're always going to be ingesting bacteria, but you have to have a good immune system to be able to protect it. And that's where the faith comes in. Um, and if you don't have a strong immune system, system a strong foundation in christ you're going to be swayed one way or the other with like the different thing the different voices of the culture all the subjective chaotic voices of the culture whether it be from protestants whether it be from leftists whether it be from uh muslims whether it be from like people in like the godless uh red pill sphere communities like it's just going to keep getting influenced and it's just going to be totally subjective you need to have a good foundation in christ or else you're just going to keep swaying yeah. No, I like what you said there. The bacteria is always there, but you got to have a good immune system. I like that a lot. Switching gears a little bit here. Uh, I want to talk about a cultural topic that is coming out of Ohio. I'll read some of this article. We can read it together. Catholic Diocese of Cleveland, through its new directive, becomes part of national debate over LGBTQ policies. The policy is spurred an outcry from people who say the directive, which impacts schools and parishes across eight counties, will harm LGBTQ parishioners especially children. Reporters say it furthers the support that church belief that God made man and woman for marriage and same-sex attraction is sin. Mm -hmm. So it is really interesting. When you get to the actual policy, um, it says that it prevents students and staff from undergoing gender-affirming care, quote-unquote gender-affirming care, yeah. and using pronouns different than those affiliated with a person's biological sex. It also requires church or school staff members to tell the parents of a child who might be transgender what do you think mm -hmm. what do you think franco i'm just gonna say it's in it's in alignment with church teaching like it doesn't matter if like uh somebody wants to be like well i disagree i'm a catholic and i disagree it's like that's in alignment with church teaching they're just making it into policy like it's really like i mean this is this has been affirmed by pope francis this has been affirmed by the ecumenical council this has been affirmed by pretty much anything that's d dogmatic like it literally like this is a beautiful thing about the catholic faith right we can objectively state that this like lying to children telling them yeah you are this or like you know get, try to get, get uh concede on the ground of giving them like their preferred pronouns that's still lying to them maybe like maybe you can like try to if you're trying to be like optical about it sure you can maybe like call them by their preferred name but because that's not like actually lying but when you call them by a by a pronoun that is not according to their gender that is a lie Christians should not be lying to children, should not be lying to people at all. It is a sin to lie. And as as these Catholic dioceses are doing this, like I think that's great. I think it's honestly really good because again, it's not I know I, I know this uh, I know the article that like that we that you uh, that we had you had me look at like with that that's covering this stuff. They talk about um Pope Francis how it goes against like Pope like or how it kind of like kind of is of uh, yin and yang with what Pope Francis said recently about the um you know hom like accepting homosexuals into the church and stuff like that. But 
this is where I this is how I view it, right? Because I mean, I think a lot like a lot the media. I think it's in the best interest for the media to make Pope Francis look like a leftist, despite all the other stuff that he has said about transgenderism being a literal colonize, like a literal uh, like it's literally evil. He's like branded it as an evil, like an ideological colonization. He's talked about how same sex marriage is di a diabolical attack on the family. But these leftist media media outlets will grab like the most vague statements from the Pope and then be like. Well, look at that. He says homosexuals have a right to live in the church. And it's like, well, what does that mean? Do you want to interpret that in a sinful way? Or do you want to interpret that in a charitable way? W charitable way, which would make more sense. And like, yeah, everybody's called to be in the body of Christ. Everybody's called to follow Jesus. And it's through being in that church, in the church, in the hospital of Christ, that they're going to be sanctified of their sin. Like what, which way, or, or do you want to be like, oh, he's saying that they should get castrations. Like, yeah, That's yeah. Not it, says, it says here that like, it says uh, Pope Francis, who last month told Jesuit priests that he realized the struggles of homosexual Catholics and that everyone, everyone, everyone is called to live in the church. Never forget yeah. that, which is true, which is true. But I think it's interesting, like these policies are directly from the Bible. They are from church teaching. Um, and I 100 percent support this because, like you said, this is yeah. the compassionate thing to do. This is the godly thing to do. This is just the logical thing to do. 10 yeah. years ago, you know, we wouldn't even be having to make these decisions. People just left, you know, regular people alone. Um, there wasn't the pronoun stuff. There wasn't the transgender stuff. And what I find interesting is now that stuff like this is happening, and I think it's going to become more popular because the pendulum is swinging back the other way where people are realizing how insane this culture is getting. And this is what the left does is they will go so far left. And then when people try to take it back the other way, like with this, they're going to say, well, that's you. That is the church, right? Influencing and, and imposing your religion on everybody else. <laughs> and this makes me think about how ridiculous the whole separation of church and state thing is. Because again, yeah. we just talked about earlier that everybody is influenced by something. And just because yeah. my policy or just because policy is influenced by the church or influenced by religion doesn't mean that we can't have that or that we shouldn't have that in schools, right? Is Are they imposing their secular leftist beliefs on schools when they take religion out of schools i i could say that and i do say that that it, that definitely is right the problem isn't mm. about imposition it's about whether or not that imposition is good right? exactly a 30 exactly. mile an hour speed limit is an imposition of your morals and beliefs on me right it's mm -hmm. not a question of if we are going to impose it's whether or not it is good and this yeah. is a good imposition and the other thing i find funny is you know it's if, if you believe something is true, and this is why subjective morality is so bad, is that if you don't have an objective God or an objective standard to look at, everything devolves into subjectivity, right? And yeah. with objective yeah. truth, with objectivity, it's not just good for me, right? It's not just good for me and you. It's good for everybody. And why wouldn't I want mm -hmm. to impose goodness that leads to a fulfilling mm -hmm. life on everybody? But people will also look at this and they'll attack Christians for, you know, imposing things. But when you look at what Muslims believe or what Jews believe for that matter, and they impose that on their own lives and they want to spread that throughout the community, nobody complains. It's only, I think, when Christians pick up their Bible and do what it says and wants to spread that to everybody else when we get ostracized for it and when we get vilified for it. Um, this mm. is just the reality of being a Christian in America. Yeah, so true. And like, and I think a lot of people are still very like, they kind of flinch when they hear of like, oh, we're still going to impose our beliefs on them. It's like, well, it's not like you have to think of it this way, because religion, I'm sure you can already acknowledge this, Aldo, that like religion in itself is a claim on reality. It's not an opinion. It's not as if we're like, well, I like vanilla ice cream or I like chocolate. It's like, it's not that. It's like, this is the way that the world is. When we say rape is wrong, it's because it's objectively wrong. Like, sure, your preference might, you, you, I mean, sorry, your, your, your perspective might be like, well, what if a what, what if a psychopath thinks it's not wrong? Well, then his perspective, that psychopath's perspective is not in alignment with reality. There is only one reality and just different perspectives. And your perspective can either be aligned with reality or not aligned with reality. And as a Catholic, I would say that the most aligned perspective on reality is that of a cath of the Catholic faith. And when you acknowledge that, when you're like, okay, this is the reality that, yeah, it is sinful to have children castrate themselves, to influence others into sin and to, and to thinking that they, their mental illness is fine. And because that's not love, that's not, it's not love to tell them like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine for you to like, 
like to have this like to, to not to not do anything about your mental illness to like that it, it is fine for you to like believe that you have this uh this uh you're a woman inside a man's body or whatever it's like no like that's not right it's not it's not if you care about these people you wouldn't be telling them that you would want to get them the help that they seek and i don't mean it's in the sense of like okay yeah like you're gonna you know let, let's uh let's bully them and make fun of them like now there are some merits to bullying that i've heard about <laughs> but at the same time you have to understand these people are like literally like they need help like the reason that why they're like this is because there has been something that went on in the home usually if you look at the statistics usually something went on early in childhood life that has caused them to turn out like this children we are largely shaped by our childhoods especially with our biases our, our ideologies it is very largely shaped by our, by our childhoods and that's why I really appreciate how in the article that you sent me it talks about how like if staff members like the, the diocese said like if staff members worry that telling the ch child's parents may put the student at risk of physical abuse they must first consult with the diocese's legal office and moral theologian right there it shows you that these, like we're not the Catholics aren't doing this because we're like oh we don't like we, we're intolerant or whatever we're doing this because we genuinely love these people and we want them to see them thrive in the body of Christ we don't want to ostracize them we generally want them to do better and it's not love for you to be like well I mean it's just my opinion if you want to do it in your privacy of your own home it's fine that is not Christian that is a libertarian stance libertarian stance people you know what to all our libertarian friends out there it's all right you'll come around you'll get it one day <laughs> 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 hey we all we all used to be we we all we all had that phase we all had that phase that's true that's true <laughs> yeah well yeah no i think this is good news uh it'll be interesting to just see how this develops because this is still pretty new but yeah this is in line with the church uh in line with the catholic faith it's exciting i think that you know a lot of i think catholics and religious people in general have been bullied into being very meek um and hiding away from their yeah. faith and being bold and implementing it, you know, with policy. So I think this is really, really cool news. And I think this is, uh, this is great. I want to see more of it. So true. So true. We, we love this, don't we folks? We love it. <laughs> well, anyway, man, uh, it was really good having you on and we'll definitely be back to do some more stuff, but I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you on this for everybody watching. Where can people find you? Uh, follow me on at the Franco TV, the Franco TV on like, literally all social media. You can find me there. T H E F R A N C O TV. Thank, Thank you so much. much. I hope you, I hope you like the content. I hope you like the content for sure, man. All right. I'll talk to you again soon, man.